This video was edited by AJ Analysis, a link to his channel will be in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to be identifying a few championship players that Manchester United should be looking at in the summer, analysing how they'd fit into Ten Hag's system, whether they'd actually be worth signing, and where they should go if it's not Manchester United. But before I go any further, if you do like the look of any of these retro jerseys, then go over to freeretro.com, which will be linked in the description. They have a great variety of different retro jerseys, including Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, as well as Brazil, Argentina, England, Barcelona, and Inter Milan. And my personal favourites are this Inter Milan shirt from the early 90s or this Celtic shirt which I think looks very good as well so be sure to check them out a link will be left in the description below anything you do buy will be helping to support the channel so the first player on the list is Nottingham Forest 21 year old right back Jed Spence whose contract there goes until the end of the season as he is on loan but his contract at his parent club Middlesbrough runs until 2024 it's fair to say that Spence is a physical specimen something you don't often see from fullbacks who tend to be small and diminutive however Spence stands at around six foot one in height and has the pace combined with the upper body strength to form a powerful dribbling style. When he receives the ball he does seem quite awkward and unorthodox with his stance almost dragging the ball behind him as he carries it forward but he's able to shift it quickly and then use a burst of acceleration to motor past the opposition player down the right flank and this makes him a great progressor of the ball down the right side. Able to carry the ball into the final third and we can see just how good he is at doing this as this season he's completed 1.4 dribbles per 90 from right back, the fifth most of any fullback in the championship. Defensively, he's also solid, able to use his strength and acceleration, as well as having great concentration to be a very good one-on-one -on -one defender, as he showed against Gabriel Martinelli in Forest FA Cup tie versus Arsenal this season. We can see this as this season in the Championship, he's completed 1.5 tackles per 90, being dribbled past just 0.6 times per 90, giving him a very impressive tackle success rate of 71.4%. He's also a good front foot defender as well, having the anticipation to read the game and jump out to intercept a pass into an opposition's wide player, make the interception and then burst forward to lead the counter. And this can be shown as he's completed 1.7 interceptions per 90 this season, the third most of any fullback in the championship. In fact, we can see how well he's performed this season as he has a who scored rating of 7.10, the 11th highest of any player in the championship. However, I do think that if he's to fully make that transition to Premier League level, especially to Manchester United, he does need to improve his end product in the final third. See, he is excellent at driving past players and getting into the final third. But I don't think that his crossing ability or choice of pass either at the byline or further up the flank is as good as other fullbacks in the league. And we can kind of see this as he completes one key pass per 90, which isn't terrible, but it's only the 13th most of any fullback in the league. However, he's just 21 years old, 22 in August. And so if he can add end product to his game, he will develop into the perfect, complete, modern day fullback. So what would he provide to Manchester United? Well, United definitely need an offensive improvement on Wan-Bissaka and Spence would serve certainly provide this in the defensive and middle thirds, being a much better progressor of the ball, as he has the ability to drive past opposition pressing players with the ball at his feet, something that wan lacks the ability to do with the same fluidity and overall success. And so this would allow Ten Hag's side to beat the opposition's press a lot more efficiently, rather than through quick passes in their own half, as the ball can be shifted out to Spence, who can draw the opposition wide player in before driving past him with the ball at his feet, beating the press and allowing United to then exploit the space in behind the opposition's frontline press, something that they've really struggled to do this season. Spence would be better used as an overlapping fullback who holds his width in the system rather than as an inverted fullback as I don't think he yet has a technical ability and press resistance to play in congested central areas so in Ten Hag's side he would need to improve these attributes. As I said he does have two years left on his middles per contract so it wouldn't cost an exorbitant amount. I reckon he'd be available for around £20 million which would be great value for money for a player with huge potential. Would he be a good signing for Manchester United? Yes, I think he would, but ideally he'd be an alternative option to a top-level right-back. However, United currently have Dalo, so maybe a move for Spence to Manchester United is not the best fit at the moment, but he'd still be a very good option if United couldn't get Jeremy Fringpong or Nusa Mazraoui. But what if Spence doesn't go to Manchester United? Well, I think both Arsenal and Tottenham would be excellent moves. That would suit both player and the clubs. 
Both sides need a long-term right back capable of being an offensive overlapping threat, and Spence would not only suit this to a T, but he'd also be well within their budgets as well. Bayern Munich could also be a very good fit for Spence as well, as he seems to have a similar sort of physical profile to Alfonso Davies, and I'd love to see how good Spence could become if he had a similar sort of development to the Canadian. The next option from the championship for Manchester United is also a player currently playing at Nottingham Forest, and is a 20-year-old rising star Brennan Johnson. Now Johnson is only 20, 21 in May, but has already racked up a huge number of games for a player of his age, playing over 100 senior games since 2019, including 43 games in the championship this season alone, and he's also got 9 caps for the Wales national team to his name. Johnson is kind of a hybrid between a central attacking midfielder and a winger, he operates primarily in central positions, but he has fantastic ball carrying ability, being deceptively quick, which combined with his excellent ball control enables him to drive past opposition players into the final third. His interplay in the opposition's half is also very good, with him able to play quick one-twos and release plays with flicks and first-time passes. He's also a creative force driving down the flank and putting in low crosses into the box. However, if we look at him statistically, we can see that he isn't putting out insane creative numbers as he completes just 1.4 key passes per 90 and 1.2 dribbles per 90. Not terrible, but not outstanding either. However, what is outstanding is his goal scoring as he's scored 15 goals in 43 games this season, and this comes from his composure and shooting ability in side of the box. We often see him driving beyond the forward line, in behind the opposition's defensive line, and when in front of goal and under pressure, he has fantastic composure to usually either slot the ball into the corner or dink it over the onrushing keeper. When the ball falls to him further out inside of the box, his technique to drill the ball with pace past the keeper is usually accurate, and I would say that because of his goal scoring ability, he reminds me of a young Deli Ali. In terms of not being the side's main advanced creator of chances, but a player who makes late runs into the box to finish those chances. In Ten Hag's system, I could see Johnson being a good long-term option in Bruno Fernandes' position in the midfield three as the most advanced central midfielder who sits between the lines of the opposition system and looks to make movements underlapping the wide player between the centre-back and left-back into wide positions or ahead of the forward into goal-scoring positions himself. He doesn't have the chance-creating ability that I think Ten Hag would need, but I could see him developing into a useful player who could almost be used in a similar sort of way to how Donny van der Beek was used whilst he he was at Ajax. His ball carrying ability also means he's suited to transition in the attack quickly, which is also a massive use in central midfield areas in the modern game. He only has one year left on his Forest contract come the summer, which expires in 2023, and so I think a fee between 12 and 15 million pounds would be enough to land him. If he's not Manchester United, I think Leicester or West Ham would be good moves for the young Welshman, with him being able to play as the most advanced midfielder in Brendan Rodgers' midfield three, or in the three ahead of David Moyes' midfield double pivot, as a younger version of Jesse Lingard, having the ball carrying ability and goal scoring ability that would suit West Ham's quick transition in attack. And the final player from the championship for Manchester United to potentially sign is Peterborough's under 19 England international centre back Ronnie Edwards. Edwards only turned 19 this March but has already played 31 senior games for Peterborough since joining from Barnet in 2020. The obvious reason why I think Edwards would be a good option for Ten Hag's United is because of his on the ball ability. When he receives the ball and an opposition forward is applying pressure, he has great composure and technique to simply body feint and turn away from pressure, not only keeping the ball but also taking a presser out of the game. His long passing is also very good, able to switch to play from deeper positions, whilst also being able to drive out past the pressing line with the ball at his feet. This would make him perfectly suited to Ten Hag's style of play at United, as the centre-backs need to be composed under pressure and be able to find forward passes or have the press resistance to play out when being pressed, and Edwards would certainly provide this. But Edwards also excels defensively, being a very considered defender and not rash when faced with one-on-one -on -one defending opportunities. Instead, he holds his ground and waits for the precise moment to put in a firm standing or sliding tackle, and this can be seen as this season in the championship, he's completed 1.9 tackles per 90, only being dribbled past 0.7 times per 90, giving him a tackle success rate of 73%. He isn't the quickest centre-back, but neither is he as slow as someone like Harry Maguire, and so instead of playing as a covering centre-back, he instead is better at being the stopper centre-back, who anticipates passes into the forward line and steps out to make the interception. And this can be seen as this season he's completed 1.4 interceptions per 90, which whilst not being a massive amount, still shows his ability to read the game and win the ball back. However, Edward 
Edwards is still very young, particularly for a centre back, and so he does need to refine certain parts of his game. I think he needs to increase his upper body strength to make him a greater physical centre back, enabling him to dominate centre forwards more than he's currently able to do. And he also needs to improve his aerial ability as well, as he currently ranks 77th out of 78th four aerial duels, one when compared against every other centre back in the league, completing just 0 0.8 per 90, whilst losing 1.4 per 90, meaning he wins just 38% of his aerial duels. Yet yeah, I do think this is something that can be worked on and despite lacking in these traditional defensive areas, he does excel on the ball and in tackling situations, which does make him unique, particularly amongst centre backs in the football league. Plus he already has a great deal of experience playing in the football league, which I generally think helps younger players develop a lot faster. Though players who remain sheltered playing in youth football in their latter teenage years and so despite probably not being first team ready just yet I think if signed Manchester United should look to loan him back to the championship or maybe to the Eredivisie as I do think in the next two to three seasons he could develop into one of the best young centre backs in Europe. He has a contract at Peterborough until 2025 and so would still cost quite a bit relative to the championship. I think he'd cost between 15 and 20 million pounds, which is probably a fair fee for United. But if not Old Trafford, where should he go? Well, he has been linked with the Bundesliga as of recent, and I do think RB Leipzig seems like the right type of move for Edwards. But I also think that Ajax could be a good move for him as well, as a style of football will allow him to develop his ball playing ability. He won't be overwhelmed with the physicality, which definitely could be a problem in the Premier League. Nevertheless, I think he's one of England's brightest young centre backs at the moment, and so would be a good signing for any club. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, put your thoughts in the comment section and check out some of my other Manchester United analysis videos linked in the description below.